Okay, so let's look at not Q because we're going to go from the inside out of this. Okay, not Q is false, false, true, true, false, false, true, true. Okay, <coughs> and then we're going to take the rest of the inside of this parenthesis. It is not Q and P. And when we have an and statement, we are looking for what? Two what? True. Two trues, okay? So we need two trues for the P and the not Q. There's one right <coughs> here. Here's another. Any other ones? No. Nope. Okay. So this one's going to be a true, this one's going to be a true, and everything else will be a false. Okay. Now we want to look at R or not Q and P. If it's an or statement, I'm looking for what? False. Falses, okay? So here's my R, and then we're going to look at this column right here. So we're looking for two falses. Here's one right here. Here's another right here. And up at the top. Is there any other ones? Nope. Okay, so those places I'm going to have falses. Everything else is a true. <coughs> okay, now I need to look at this side of the equation. I'm going to look at the not P. A not P would be false, 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 true, 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 true. And then I'm going to just, you guys, I'm not even going to rewrite this. I'm just going to say, put that in that. Notice that it's an if and only if statement. So what am I looking for for that one? Two trues and two falses. Two trues and two falses. So here's a true and a true. Right here. False and false. So those will all be true. Everything else is a false. <coughs> It wasn't quite so bad as it looked. Okay, so today's lesson is on section 3-5. We are looking at equivalent compound statements to start with. Then we're going to go into converse, inverse, and contrapositives of conditional statements. Okay, so the first thing we're going to look at, and this is a definition that I want you to write down in your notes, is equivalent compound statements. They are made up of the same simple statements and have the same corresponding truth values. So what I want to do is show you how two statements are equivalent. We're going to first look at this statement right here, P or not Q. And then we're going to look at not P, if not P, then not Q. Okay, so all we need to do, and these two statements are pretty easy. We just need, need to make a truth table for both of them. Okay, so on the, top, on the one on the left, we are looking at not Q first. So I will put down false, true, false, true. And then if it's an or statement, what are we looking for? Two falses, right? And we're looking at the P column and the Q column. So two falses, the, the not Q column, I should say. And that would be this one and this one. So this one is going to be a false. The rest will be true. Now let's do the same thing on the right-hand side. Let's find the not P first. So that will be false, false, true, true, because we're just doing the opposite of what's in the P column. Same thing with the not Q. The opposite of the Q column is false, true, false, true. Now, we are looking at an if-then statement. So we are looking for what? First, first a true, then a false. And we have that right here. So that would make that particular one a false. Everything else 
is true. Notice how the truth statements are the same for both of these. So these are equivalent compound statements. Let's look at this example. We have P is I attend my class and Q I lose my scholarship. So we want to know if these two statements are equivalent. So if P are P or Q, I attend my class or I lose my scholarship is equivalent to I do not lose my scholarship. If I do not lose my scholarship, then I attend class. Okay? It sounds in English like it's very similar, but we need to check to see from the truth tables if it actually is. Okay? So P or Q, you know once again that those are two falses. And here they are at the bottom. That'll be a false and the rest are true. And not Q, P, so we're looking at not Q, then P. We're looking for first a true and then a false. So that's right here. That'll be false. Everything else is a true. So looking at these two, they are, they're equivalent. Okay? So we know that I attend class or I lose my scholarship is equivalent to if I do not lose my scholarship, then I attend my class. So I can write this as this, P or Q, and then notice it's three lines for equivalency. Is equivalent to not Q, if not Q, then P. So make sure you see this because that's what you're going to see in the book. And that's indicating equivalency. How do you show that this is not, this is equivalent? Well, really easy actually. We're only dealing with one variable, P. So you only have two possibilities, a true and a false, right? Wait, so for every variable you add another column plus two more on the bottom, or you just double it on the bottom? Yeah, so... It, two goes to four and then four goes to eight. Yeah, so for each variable you have, you're going to have two to the n rows. Okay? So we're just looking at P today, right, for this one. So if I did a not P, that's going to be false and then true, correct? And then we're doing a not not P... This will be true, false. And then we'll do a not. Not P. <laughs> and then this is a false and then a true. And then it says, is this one equal to this one? Well, yeah. 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 Okay, so we have an example. And uh, this is the statement that we start with. Miguel is blushing or sunburned. Okay, select the statement that is equivalent. So A is if Miguel is blushing, then he is sunburned. I forgot the end there. Then he is not sunburned. Okay. Miguel is sunburned or blushing. If Miguel is not blushing, blushing then he is sunburned. Or D, if Miguel is not sunburned, then he is blushing. What we want to know is which of these statements are equivalent to the first one. So if you notice that I, in red, wrote down these in symbolic form. So in your homework, Blitzer gives you the statements, but he doesn't give you the symbolic form. You have to come up with that yourself. Okay? All right. Based on the last page, I've written all the possible statements, and the first one on the left is the first statement we started with, okay? A, this one's A, B, C, and D. And what we're going to do is actually make a truth table with all these values and just check to see which ones match A. 
okay? So the first thing we're going to want to do on this one is we want to look for a not Q. Or no, we just want to find P or Q first. Okay, so it's an or statement. We're looking for what? Two falses, and they're at the bottom, so I'm going to make this a false. Everything else is going to be a true. And like I said, don't feel like you have to write this down because it is in the book. Okay. So the next one I'm going to write down is a not Q. That will be false, true, false, true. And then I need to look for if P, then not Q. So I got to look for a true and then a false. And I see that right here. Oops, no, I'm not looking at that one. We're looking at P and then an F. So right here, the top one, right? So that... Right here will be an F, and everything else will be a true. Already, we can see that this is our original statement. Okay, so already A is not equivalent, so I'm just going to X out A. Okay. Now, let's check for B. Q or P. Well, if you're doing QRP, you're still looking for two falses. And over here, you have two falses right here. Even though they're in different order, it still turns out the same. So this will be a false, true, true, true. So is that one equivalent to the first statement? Yes. Yeah, it is. So B is equivalent so far. Okay, and let's look at C. We're going to look at a not P. So that will be a false, false, true, true. Then I want to, I'm just going to move the Q down here because it's so far away and I just want to make sure they're in order. So on this one, not P, then Q. If not P, then Q. We look for a true and then a false. So that's this one right here, right? So false and everything else is true. Is that one equivalent to the first statement? Yep, it is. That one's also equivalent. Okay, so let's look at the very last one. We're going to look at a not Q. I'm just going to write P again here. And then look at a not Q, then P. So not Q would be a false, a true, a false, a true. True, true, false, false. I'm just copying that over. And then once again, we got to look for the TF in order. There it is. This is false. Everything else is true. So is this equivalent? Yeah, so therefore... The only one that's not equivalent was A. Okay, so if I look back at my statements again from the page before, I'll come right back to this in a minute. If Miguel is blushing, then he is not sunburned. That's the only one that is not equivalent <coughs> to the very first statement that we did. Okay, so remember last Friday we were talking about if I drew your ticket, then you want a pizza. And we discovered that the equivalent statement to that is if I reversed the two statements and negate them. So that's like saying if P, then Q, and then also if not Q, then P, not P. Those two statements were equivalent. The name of that is called contrapositive. And that's what this is right here, contrapositive. In your homework tonight, uh, Blitzer is going to give you some statements, and you need to come up with the contrapositive of those statements. Okay? So a contrapositive is taking the two statements, reversing them, and negating them. So for A, if you can read this, then you are driving too closely. How many of you guys have seen that on bumper sticker? A few of you? Okay. So the contrapositive to that. We've got to reverse them and negate it. If you are not driving too closely, then you can't read this. So B, 
if you do not have clean underwear, it's time to do laundry. Now, forgive me, this was from Blitzer directly. I didn't come up with this one. If you do not have clean underwear, then it's time to do laundry. So the contrapositive of that is reversing it and negating it. If it is not time to do laundry, then you have clean underwear. <coughs> All right, so now we have variation of conditional statements. Okay, so the conditional is our original thing, P, if P, then Q. That's that top line. Then we have something new called converse. We had the Q first, there is where Q and P are reversed. If Q, then P. Inverse. Not P, if not P, then not Q. And contrapositive. If not Q, then not P. Let me tell you this right now. This is something you really need to remember. Hint, hint. Okay? So in your homework, it, Blitzer will give you a statement like, if you are in Iran, comma, then you don't see a club med. Okay, so that's an example of a conditional, the very first thing that we have. If I asked you to write this in converse, what you're going to do is flip them around. If you don't see a Club Med, then you are in Iran. Club Med is a resort, kind of like sandals. Inverse. If you are not in Iran, then you see a Club Med. And then the contrapositive of that is, if you see a Club Med, then you are not in Iran. So what will happen is he will give you a statement, and then you've got to write the converse, the inverse, and the contrapositive to it, just like this. <coughs>